ThinkPad T430 is without a doubt one of my favorite laptops of all time. It's certainly not the newest, thinnest, or most powerful laptop out there, but it does what I need it to do, and it's developed a very strong reputation in the ThinkPad community. My personal T430 has certainly been through a lot. I've taken this thing pretty much everywhere, and it even survived getting knocked off a stage. The Ivy Bridge ThinkPads in general are great machines for all-around computing. They are relatively affordable on the used market, they can rival the performance of many newer, low-to-mid-range laptops out there, and finding replacement parts and upgrades for these machines is fairly easy. There's also a pretty diverse selection of both legacy and modern ports, and there are many upgrade and expandability options through things like the dock, express card slot, and having socketed processors. However, the T430 is not perfect. Like many other laptops, it has its flaws, and there are a few key areas in particular where this laptop lags behind others. The displays on these are subpar at best. Even when these laptops were new, these displays weren't exactly world-renowned. Like with many ThinkPads, the BIOS on the T430 is fairly limited, and even a simple upgrade like replacing the wireless card can be a hassle. And most notably, at least to me, the T430, along with its other Ivy Bridge counterparts, marked the beginning of many years of controversial design changes to the entire lineup. In this case, replacing the classic ThinkPad keyboard that had more or less stayed the same for two decades with a modern chiclet or island-style keyboard akin to what was being used on MacBooks and other Ultrabooks at the time. Unfortunately, this design change is here to stay, and since 2012 there's only been one ThinkPad that has brought back the classic keyboard, the ludicrously expensive and rather disappointing ThinkPad 25th Anniversary Edition. Don't get me wrong, the modern ThinkPad keyboard design isn't horrible and it is still far better than most other laptops out there. With the keyboard redesign, backlit keyboards made their way to mainstream ThinkPads for the first time. My biggest issue with the modern keyboard design isn't necessarily the shape of the keys or the key travel, it's the layout of the keys. Classic ThinkPad keyboards were designed to more or less replicate the layout of a desktop keyboard, which really helps improve productivity if you're frequently switching between a desktop and a laptop. The classic keyboard also had some additional handy features built in, such as an embedded numeric keypad and web browser keys, both of which I found myself using more often than I had expected. The modern island-style keyboard moves around many of these function keys, and some keys were eliminated entirely, which is why many longtime ThinkPad users have a hard time accepting the modern layout. The move from the classic to modern keyboard layout was without a doubt the largest design change that took place on this generation of ThinkPads. In other aspects, the Ivy Bridge ThinkPads saw very few changes compared to their older Sandy Bridge counterparts, and many replacement parts are shared between models. Because of the design similarities, it was quickly discovered that a keyboard from an older ThinkPad like the T420, X220, etc. could be easily fitted into the T430 and other Ivy Bridge ThinkPads. Both keyboards used the same connector and had screw posts in the same spots, so it wasn't long before people began swapping classic keyboards into T430s, W530s, X230s, and other machines from that generation. For a while, though, even if you switched the keyboards, you were still stuck with the T430's layout, which didn't solve the largest problem with the move from the old to the new. Thankfully, work in the ThinkPad community eventually solved this issue, with Hamish Coleman creating an embedded controller patch that remaps the T430 to work with the T420 keyboard properly. Since then, the classic keyboard swap has become an extremely popular mod for people that own these machines. I did this swap myself a few years ago in an X230, and I used it happily for two years before selling it to somebody else. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a classic keyboard into your Ivy Bridge ThinkPad, and how to build and flash the embedded controller patch to be able to use the keyboard as it was intended. In order to perform this mod, you're going to need a couple of materials as well as a few parts. You will need a classic keyboard that will fit into your machine. Additionally, you will need a Dremel or a metal file, cutting pliers, masking tape, and a flash drive. You will also need to have a Linux distro on hand for building the embedded controller patch. So the first thing that we need to do is make a few physical modifications to our classic keyboard so that it fits properly in our newer machine. This mainly stems from these metal tabs at the bottom of the keyboard. They're important because they help keep the keyboard from wobbling around when you're typing, but on the classic keyboard the tabs are much larger. Because of this, without doing any work, they won't fit properly into the newer machines. 
If you are doing a keyboard swap in your X230, X230 tablet, or T430S, the swapping process is a little bit easier. This is because the palm rests that were used in the Sandy Bridge counterparts, the X220, X220 tablet, and T420S, are identical to the ones used in their Ivy Bridge counterparts. So if you can get one of these, this makes for a much less obtrusive modification. Whenever I swapped the classic keyboard into my X230, this is what I did. I ordered an X220 palm rest along with it, and everything fit perfectly without having to pull out a file or Dremel. Unfortunately, with the T430, T530, and W530, while these laptops are fairly similar in design to their older counterparts, the palm rests are designed just differently enough that they can't be swapped. If you aren't sure about fully committing to the classic keyboard and you just want to try it out, you can brute force the keyboard into place without making any changes, but this makes part of the palm rest bulge up and the keyboard won't be very stable. Some people have also said you can get an X-Acto knife and cut parts of the palm rest out to make the tabs fit, but I haven't had much luck with this. I think it's just easier to modify the tabs on the keyboard. So the first thing that we need to do is the usual powering down the laptop, removing the power adapter, battery, that sort of thing. Then we have to remove the two screws from the bottom that hold the keyboard in place. Once these are removed, open the laptop up, push upwards on the keyboard, and then pull it out, and remove the ribbon cable that plugs it into the motherboard. Now set aside your laptop and get out the classic keyboard, along with your tools of choice. The first thing we need to do is shave down these metal tabs on the front of the keyboard to make it fit properly into the T430's palm rest. The center tab, the one that's underneath the track point buttons, needs to be cut off entirely. But the other tabs we don't want to fully remove, we just want to shave them down. Some people go at it with a Dremel, I used a combination of cutting pliers and a file, and I just kept shaving things down until it fit properly. You can always remove more metal, but you can't put back what's already been cut off, so be patient and take things slowly. Once you're happy with your work, do your best to clean any metal shavings out of the keyboard and the surrounding area so that these don't get into our laptop. After shaving down the tabs, we need to remove this piece of plastic that goes on top of the power and audio buttons. It shouldn't take much effort to remove, just be careful not to break any of the plastic tabs that hold it in place. Once we have that off, there are these two small pieces of plastic located right next to the print screen and escape keys that we have to cut off. Once that's done, it's time to move on to what I think is the trickiest part of this whole process. While the T420 and T430 keyboards use the same connector to plug into the motherboard, the keyboards are wired a little bit differently since some variants of the T430 keyboard came with a built-in backlight. The T420 never had a backlight, so it's not wired for it. Because of this, we have to isolate a few pins on the ribbon cable so that we don't have a short circuit. Basically, if you plug a T420 keyboard into a T430 and apply power, there is a short circuit which usually causes the keyboard backlight fuse to be blown. Generally, the short circuit burns itself out and eliminates the problem. But if you want to put a T430 keyboard back in that has a backlight, you won't be able to use the backlight. Additionally, there have been some reports of people not isolating the pins on their keyboard and then breaking the keyboard because of the short circuit. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's something I highly recommend you do. That being said, when I did the classic keyboard mod on my X230, I did not isolate the pins, and that machine worked perfectly fine for more than two years. To isolate the pins, we have to flip the keyboard over and remove these two small screws. They hold these two metal plates in, which in turn hold the ribbon cable in. Once the screws are out and the metal plates are out, you should be able to remove the ribbon cable. Lift the cable up from underneath, and look for the side of the cable that had been facing downwards. Going from the left, the second, third, and fourth pins will need to be covered up by masking tape to isolate their connection. Since the ribbon cable is made up of two layers, you actually have a little more space to work with than it initially looks, but you will want to make sure that these are completely covered and that none of the pins next to them are covered. Once the pins have been isolated, you have to carefully insert the cable into the keyboard the same way you removed it. Make sure the pins on the ribbon cable make contact with the pins on the keyboard itself. Once you have the cable back in place, it may not want to stay down on its own, so hold the cable in place until you've reattached the metal cover plates and tighten the screws. Reattach the plastic cover that went over the buttons and snap it into place. Right now is probably a good time to test the keyboard and make sure that it works, so plug it into the motherboard, plug in a power adapter, and power the laptop on. Start up the operating system of your choice, open up a text editor program, and just press down every key on the keyboard to make sure everything's working. 
Also make sure to test the track point and track point buttons to make sure those work correctly. If all of your keys are working right, then you should be good to go. Keep in mind that the laptop is still mapped for the modern keyboard layout, so a few of the function keys won't work, and some won't do what they say that they'll do. But if the main alphabetical keys are working correctly, you should be good to go. If anything is not working, you might want to make sure that you had reinstalled the ribbon cable correctly. So the next thing that we have to do is build our embedded controller patch and install it to the system. But before we do that, we need to make sure our BIOS is on the latest compatible version. It's not going to be the latest BIOS for these ThinkPads, as the last couple of patches have removed the ability to modify the embedded controller, for security reasons. However, you can still very easily downgrade to an older BIOS version. Lenovo has all of the older versions of the BIOS on their website. Additionally, if you plan on doing the Ivy Rain mod for your ThinkPad, running the Ivy Prep program gets your system ready for the mod and in the process downgrades the BIOS to the last version compatible with the embedded controller patch. Once we have the necessary BIOS version installed, it's time to build our modified embedded controller. To do so, you're going to have to venture into the wonderful world of Linux. Using a spare flash drive, make an installer for a Linux distribution of your choosing. You can install it onto your computer if you want, or you can do what I did and simply run it as a live session, which boots into a completely functional operating system from the flash drive itself. Once you've booted into Linux, connect to the internet, go on the web browser, and head to GitHub to download the necessary patch files from Hamish Coleman. Extract the files to somewhere you can easily access them, such as the desktop. And if you're like me and you're not really comfortable typing in terminal commands, there's a handy readme file that you can have open on the side as a reference. Open up the terminal and type in the command sudo apt-get update and hit enter. This will install any necessary updates for the operating system. Once that finishes, Type in the command sudo apt-get install build-essential git mtools lib ssl-dev and hit Y when prompted. After waiting a few more seconds while it installs what you need, you now need to make a copy of the embedded controller files. Type sudo git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash hamish coleman slash thinkpad-ec, and hit enter. Then type in cd thinkpad-ec to enter the directory where the embedded controller files are. While I'm in here, I'm also going to apply the battery patch, which removes the battery whitelist that ThinkPad T430s came with, which allows me to use aftermarket batteries with my system. If you want to, you can also install a patch to swap the function and control keys, but I opted not to do this. Type in sudo make patch underscore enable underscore battery clean. Now type in sudo make list underscore laptops to have it show all of the laptop models that you can install this patch on. From there, you need to select the model that is applicable to your system. Make sure you create a patch for your exact laptop. So if you're using a T430, make a T430 patch file. If you have a W530, use the W530 patch file. If you use the wrong patch, you will brick your system. So for me, since I'm using a T430, I'm going to type in sudo make patched.t430.img. Now it's going to download that same BIOS that we just installed. And in the process, it's going to add in the patched keyboard and battery files. Once that's done, we have a completed installer to patch our system. So the last thing we need to do is write this installer to a drive of our choosing. Type in sudo lsblk-d-o name, comma, size, comma, label. This lists all of the storage drives currently detected by the system, including any internal drives, SD cards, flash drives, and optical media. Make sure you know which drive you're writing these files to so that you don't accidentally write over your operating system or any other important files. The actual command that you'll type in will vary a bit, but for me, I have an 8GB flash drive that I'll be using for the patched installer, and this shows up in my terminal as SDD with a size of 7.7GB. So for me, I typed in sudo dd if equals patched dot t430 dot img of equals slash dev slash sdd bs equals 4m status equals progress con v equals f sync 
Hit enter, wait a few moments, and the system will work its magic. If at any point in this process you get an error or something doesn't work, just make sure you typed in everything correctly. As someone who doesn't regularly use the Linux terminal, I've mistyped things quite a few times. Once it finishes making your drive, you can close out of everything and restart your system. Hit F12 to reach the ThinkPad boot menu, and select the drive that you installed the patched files to. For me, it was this USB HDD generic flash disk. You should see a message that says, Starting PC DOS, and then a screen saying, This will flash your embedded controller firmware, with a list of the patches you applied earlier. If your system does not start the patching software, you might need to head into the BIOS and change your boot settings from UEFI, or both, to legacy only. Before running the embedded controller flash, make sure you have a power adapter and fully charged battery plugged in. The laptop generally won't carry out the flash, unless both are present, as it minimizes the risk of losing power and breaking your system in the middle of flashing. Once you get to the screen, hit any key and it will do the rest of the work for you. Once it indicates the system was flashed successfully, it will restart and it will give you a message saying flashing embedded controller, then it will restart again. Time for the moment of truth. The easiest way to tell if the patch was installed successfully is to hit function and page up, since on ThinkPad T430s, the ThinkLite functionality was moved to function space. So if you hit function page up and the ThinkLite turns on, then congratulations, you've successfully remapped the T430 to work with a classic keyboard. So there you have it, a classic keyboard and an Ivy Bridge ThinkPad. There's a reason this mod is so popular. It allows you to take advantage of the many performance improvements offered by the newer hardware of these machines, while also having the debatably better keyboard of classic ThinkPads. The only major downsides of the classic keyboard swap is that the caps lock LED doesn't work, since the T430 isn't wired for a caps lock LED, and the function F3 and function F12 combinations won't work. However, these are rarely used combinations anyway, so I don't see it as a huge loss. The improved layout and overall better key travel of the classic keyboard massively improves the usability of the T430. With me doing my entire semester online, it's going to be nice to be typing on a better keyboard. However, we still have a few more improvements to make. The screen still looks terrible, and I want to upgrade the wireless card to something a little more modern. So join me next time when I install a full HD IPS display into the T430 and install the exciting Ivy Rain BIOS mod. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.